The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong, but he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it, to take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion, and he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage. Every child knew about the Sky Ripper. The Transcendent Emperor had buried its pieces deep. And then, this Emperor's horrific sacrifices had brought it back to the surface. Bernardo wasn't exactly sure how to use the legendary weapon. But surely, there must be some way to do it without provoking another catastrophe. Had he, somehow, summoned the long-lost components of the legendary weapon out of the deep places of the Earth? It was more than Bernardo could fathom. But if he could find a legendary weapon, he would use it. As he set foot on the island, Renato couldn't help feeling a bit curious. Was Lapino still waiting to be rescued? No. He was probably drinking champagne with the ravens. Did ravens drink champagne? Did rabbits? Renato felt oddly thirsty, come to think of it. Why had he chosen the Sky Ripper? Renato never made plans that required constant vigilance. He was a hero. He didn't think too much, just went with his gut and hoped it all worked out. The Sky Ripper was a long shot. He'd have to devote himself to it. No side journeys, no rescuing old friends. That was against his nature. Could he stick with it? without causing a catastrophe. Why? Maybe it's always dangerous, he imagines Zenobia saying. Eh, always the voice of reason, that one. Well, there had to be a way to use the Sky Ripper because not being able to use it was boring. So there. Did your mother tell you it's rude to stare? Snapped Renato, a little smug. said Archimedes, and I shall open a gate.
Sky Ripper's armature. The stuff that dreams are made of. Engineers' dreams, anyway. The device was intricate. No one alive had the skill to make a thing like it. How is it part of a weapon at all? He'd have to ask a scientist. But first, he'd get the second piece. Sky Ripper had a heart. A core that had come to rest on the next island. Well, there was another island he could reach. Zenobia had just invaded it with her father's raven battalions. She must be encamped there still. But fighting Zenobia now, that made no sense at all. He'd already sacrificed one friend to get this, this armature, was it? He didn't need to hurry to face her. She would find him. Renato asked himself why he changed course to confront Zenobia. He had no idea. Sometimes he would just do things and he could never figure out why he'd done them. Usually, they worked out. After all, he was a hero. The truth is, though, he wanted to see her, wasn't it? It had been a dozen years since Swordfu School. He'd followed every rumor about her, every scrap of news. Not that he still loved her. After all, she was his enemy. No, it was solely because, know your enemy. All right, maybe he should stop pretending. He knew exactly how she felt about him. But their love affair always ended with a tragic death. Unless, maybe he could find a way to dodge tragedy. Surely he could, couldn't he? Zenobia than he'd done with the core, could he? Gogglers. Renato hated gogglers. It was almost impossible to sneak past them. If one didn't spot you, another one would. Entirely sure how he was going to capture Zenobia. She'd be expecting him. And he didn't have Lapino to cook up a clever plan. Why was it again that he hadn't got the core? Maybe because the results tended to be disastrous. These streets were familiar. He thought the school was closed now. But he had been down that street a thousand times. He knew that pub. He knew that alley. He knew the alley behind it much too well. No wonder Zenobia had chosen to invade this island herself. Renardo slinked through Zenobia's ship, making no sound at all. Where were her guards? Finally, he reached her bedroom. She was curled up on her bed. Oh, he'd forgotten how beautiful she was. How sleek. How soft. He tapped her on the shoulder with his sword. She vanished. And he suddenly noticed he couldn't move except his mouth. In fact, soon he couldn't keep his mouth shut. He told Zenobia everything. Sky River, the Iblistone, even where the secret rebel base was until he was hoarse. It was some kind of truth spell. A talky, talky, talky truth spell. She called her father by far speaker toad and filled his majesty in. 
But why didn't he get the core? Croaked the fire speaker in something like His Majesty's croak. Because I missed you, darling. Renato grinned. He doesn't even know why, frowned Zenobia. <laughs> that makes no sense. It, it's a trap, shouted the Emperor. I, I, I'll meet you at the outpost, and I'll bring my interrogators. Hmm, if Renato came face to face with the Emperor, maybe he could assassinate him. But maybe it would be smarter uh, and safer to turn Zenobia against her father. You're lying, she said. Somehow you're lying. The spell hadn't worn off yet. He had to tell the truth. The trick was in making sure she wouldn't believe it. The core is perfectly safe, he said. And he tried his hardest to sound sincere. So is the Iblistone. In fact, I was trying to get them myself. <sighs> Fine then, interrogate as it is, she said angrily. I gave you a chance. The Emperor's interrogators were not especially gentle, even by weasel standards. Fortunately, Zenobia had locked him in the guest quarters on her ship, and she'd forgotten it had a toilet that, like all skyship toilets, could be vented into the abyss. This was not the sort of slippery fox he wanted to be, but just as they were about to land, he threw the latch, wrinkled his nose, and leapt through the open latrine. It was a short, safe landing. At least this part of the Nexus hadn't changed too much. Zenobia had been taking him to the Imperial Outpost. She'd never expect him to go there by himself. Well, maybe she would. I never knew with her. Imagine if you built a house on one of these things. Oh, that would be amazing. It would be like having a boat. Bernardo knew Zenobia. And Zenobia knew him. She'd suspected a trick. Now he'd vanished. She would probably guess that was his plan all along. Perfect. Maybe she wouldn't use the Sky River. At least not without taking it to the scientists at the observatory first. Meanwhile, the Emperor would be coming to the outpost personally. This could be good. Renardo was face to face with the Emperor's bodyguard. They looked very tough, but the Emperor held them back. Oh, where's my daughter? And how would I know that? Renardo grinned at him. She lured me here so that you could kill me, didn't she? Ah, don't be ridiculous, said Renardo, trying his best to sound convincing. She loves you. Oh, I knew it. The rabbit told me I couldn't trust her. The Emperor hopped out the door. His phalanx of bodyguards retreated carefully. Renato heard someone call, Arrest her! As they left. Well, that's a job well done, thought Renato. Now the fleet will be in all sorts of disarray. But maybe he could find her in the mountains. She always used to go to the mountains to hide from the world. Maybe he could even turn her against her father. Or maybe he could reap the benefits of the chaos he had sown. It was time to report to the Rebel Council, and then launch the attack on a divided and very confused Imperial fleet.
Ricardo was very proud of himself. He told the Empire everything, but now they didn't believe anything, and it looked like the Emperor didn't trust his daughter anymore either. There were some advantages to having a slippery reputation, weren't there? Bernardo wondered if he'd really fooled the Empire. He guessed he'd know soon enough. If the skies darkened with a thousand dropships, then he'd know the Empire believed his map at the Rebel base's secret location. They certainly seemed to be looking for it. There were ravens everywhere. But where weren't there ravens these days? He thought about Hypatia. Oh, she'd been an amazing rabbit. She could talk to him about comics, and talk to her son about history and battles, and talk to scholars about the ancient tomes hidden deep in the vaults of the library of Ubar. Oh, Renato really missed her. Emperor would attack Zenobia. The ravens, divided into two armies, would slaughter each other. Then the rebellion could just show up and claim victory. The council would be overjoyed that Renata had given away all their secrets. See? It was actually very fine weather except for the occasional shower of ravens. And no one was burning the ruins down with the mighty power of a god's eye. If the Empire believed anything he'd said, they certainly weren't showing it. Two eyes, good. One eye, dead. stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. He was on fire. So far so good. As he told his hilarious adventures to the Rebel Council, he began to realize they weren't laughing. Just staring at him with those big bug eyes. Zenobia, let you escape? Asked the speaker. How do we know you're not a double agent? Then I wouldn't tell you about her at all. Maybe you're trying to sound like an idiot, so we don't realize how clever you are, croaked the speaker. No, I promise you, I really am that much of an idiot. Renato was about to say when a half dozen Imperial ships began to bomb the base. He's betrayed us, croaked the toads, and Renato decided it would be good to be somewhere else. He boarded the Farfarer and got out of there. The wind ruffled Renato's fur the wrong way. So the rebels thought he was lying too? Because a half dozen lousy dropships have probably just tripped over the rebel base? Okay, technically he had betrayed its location, but... Not willingly. And he'd made up for it, hadn't he? Then something exploded. A cannon shot. The Farfarer plunged out of the clouds. The rebels had hit his ship. As the Farfarer plummeted towards the abyss, he launched himself into the sails of an Imperial ship. Farfarer was gone. It'd have been a beautiful ship. And fast. It could do the Kestrel run in 12 furlongs. So the salesman had told him he would show them. He would be the hero of the final battle. They'd know whose side he was on then. That's what it meant to be a hero. To go on fighting, 
even when both sides were trying to kill you. There was an engraving. Maximum capacity, 130 people. Banana peels. There had to be more. There was. Rebels were fighting ravens everywhere, and not a super weapon in sight. No one was summoning giant murder bears out of the clouds. There were no locusts, no rain of fire. Something blew up nearby, and Renato decided it was not time to stop and ponder. Just as well. He liked acting much better than pondering. Renato reached the Emperor's ship, and there he saw a strange sight. Zenobia being led in shackles by Lapino, 
with a squad of ravens. What? The Pino was working with the ravens? Was he some sort of traitor? Of course Lapino was working with the ravens. But the Emperor still thought Zenobia was a traitor? Renata felt oddly bad about that. Should he run down there and rescue her? Oh, but she was the enemy. Then he heard a whistling sound. He looked straight up and saw a rebel ship. It was dropping rather large bombs. One of them kept getting bigger as it fell. Huh? Oh. Oh, again? But he already had all the secrets he needed. He was sure of that. He must have not used them the right way. Ah, what was the best, worst mistake he could make? Probably trusting that traitor Lapino. The book's pages fluttered to the beginning once again. Faster than before, and he fell. Special thanks to my patrons Heaven Over Hell, Justin Wood, Hobbs, Koopy Vegeta, Gunrunner, and Water.